Genetics comes out, they start co-auditing, and people are starting, you know, it's, Hubbard was like a good, like a P.T. Barnum kind of thing. He had a lot of charisma, people liked him, the people I knew that were in then, they were pretty jazzed, it was pretty exciting. And mental health wasn't doing so great back then, so this was Dianetics' modern science of mental health. And Hubbard said you could erase your reactive mind and you would be clear, right? You, have any of you ever heard that term, clear? Right, which is no reactive mind, which would, he said you'd have a perfect memory, you'd have no more upsets, no more uncon, you know, moments of loss, you'd be right in present time all the time, computing perfectly, okay? It sounded pretty good to me, I thought, wow. And I was excited, in Scientology there's two sides to it, there's auditing and there's training. So they can either get you in, if you're, let's say you're upset, they would go, you, you need to go clear. Come on in, we'll get you clear. Let's say you go, I want to help mankind. Come on in, we'll train you up as an auditor, we'll get you clearing people. And you can, you know, and my dad, my grandfather was a doctor, and I was always around, he helping people, my dad helping people. But I didn't have the patience to go through college and medical school, and I thought, perfect, I can clear people, this will be great, you know. And I did, I wrote my dad, I said, I found my profession, you know, I'm going to be an auditor. And I mean, it was, I will say this to every single person, because I tell people this all the time, Always tell people how you feel about them and how much you love them. Because you never know when you're going to lose someone. I lost my dad. He was 51. He was a professional athlete, but he had a heart attack and he died. And I was the only person in the family who had written him everything. I just said, you know, I'm so sorry for all that I've done to you and the trouble I've caused you, but I found what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. I'm going to be a Scientologist, a Dianetic Auditor, all this other stuff. That, I'm, he probably had a heart attack over that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it was great. I, I was the only person that got to tell him how much I loved him. And I always tell people, tell him today, because you never know. You just never know. But anyway, getting back to it, Scientology does practical, practice medical malpractice. That's what happens. That's what happened with me getting off my medicine. That is medical malpractice. My doctors prescribe this. This yo-ho who's not trained in anything is telling me you have to get off your medication, right? Well, this started in 1951. Hubbard at the Dianetic Org in Elizabeth, New Jersey was kicked out due to practicing without medicine without a license. So he moved to Kansas. He was a good, you know, you know, move around guy, right? Moved to Kansas, moved to Phoenix, Arizona. Late in 52, due to bankruptcy, Hubbard lost the rights to Dianetics which becomes the property of John Parcell at the Kansas Dianetics Center. So now he drops the name Dianetics. He's not using that as much. He starts in calling it Scientology. Now Di Hubbard says Scientology means knowing how to know. <laughs> now as skeptics, it couldn't be farther from that. You know, truthfully, it couldn't. But you believe it when you get in. 53, Dianetic Group in Detroit, Michigan was raided by police and E-meters confiscated and again he was charged with practicing medicine without a license. So Hubbard wrote Helen O'Brien, who was the head of the Pennsylvania Dianetic Group, and said, with the recent events, we should look at marketing ourselves as a spiritual clinic. Now keep in mind in 47, Hubbard was quoted saying, if you want to make money, start a religion. That was really the beginning of, uh, one month later, he started the Church of Scientology, right? So it kind of switched from Dianetics into the Church of Scientology. Now. When you're in Scientology, you don't know that. All that stuff I just told you, you don't know anything about. You have no access to it. You have no way to read it. You know, any of this critical information, you don't know. So, and you get in trouble if you read it. So, you know, it's just, and again, people go, but how could you do that? But it's like the Truman Show. The, these scientists did these experiments. Have anybody ever seen the Milgram experiment? Well, they had these two experiments they did. One of them, my favorite, is the one with lines where this guy, and this is a true scientific experiment, where the guy had two long lines, two short lines. He took five kids in a room and he said, look, we're going to change this guy's mind. You're going to tell him the long line equals the short line. And we're going to do it until he, he changes his mind. And they go, and it's filmed. He films it and they go around the room and they go, which line equals which? And the five kids go, well, let's see, one, let's say one and three are long and long. So they go one and two, one and four, basically saying the long line equals the short line. And the, the, the last guy, the new guy, the dupe, come, he goes, no way. You know, it's like the long line equals the long line. And so then they go, you know what, you're not getting it. What's happening with you? You're not looking at this. Look, you've got to focus. I mean, we're going to do it again. 
we're going to give you another try, but focus, look at it, right? And they go around again, and the guy, now you see his face at the end, because all the five guys go, the long line equals the short line, and at the end he's like, you can tell he's a little confused, he's not quite sure, and he goes, no, the long line equals the long line, and they go, okay, come on, man, what's going on with you? Look, all five of us saw it, what's happening with you? Come on, now look at it, now focus, think about it, right? And they really pound it into him. He's not getting it, right? So they say, okay, we're going to do it one more time. And they do it one more time. And the last time you see his whole face, his own knowingness, his own himself <coughs> kind of drops away. And he goes, okay, the long line equals the short line. And it's peer pressure. And that's what happens in Scientology, truthfully. And I know Scientologists go, oh, oh, oh that's not true at all. Count on me. That's what happens. It's, uh, my analogy is it's like a slow train of mind control where, and think of a pyramid. Down here, tons of people get in. Come on in, hop on the train, it's 20 bucks, it's a communication course. And they, again, remember, people don't join cults, cults find you. So they'll find you, they, they can, ooh, you look like a good guy. They'll th be thinking, hey, that guy's got money. He, we, we can get him in. <laughs> it's always one of the prerequisites. Do they have enough money to do the bridge? Now, it wasn't when we got in, but now it is. They've changed it so it's so much money, it's ridiculous. But anyway, why don't we have lunch? You know, come on over to Celebrity Center. We, you know, I think, I think we could talk to you. And the guy goes over to Celebrity Center. Everybody's really friendly. He's like, wow, this is, this is cool. This is working along. And all of a sudden, more people come in and, you know, like, why don't you sign up for the communication course? We've done it. It's really great. So the guy says, okay, here's 20 bucks. He's on the train, right? But he's planning, you know, I'm getting off at the next stop. I mean, I'm here. I'm on the train, but I'm getting off at the next stop. But now the next stop comes and he goes, I'm, okay, that was great. I had my success. And you remember, every course you finish, you have to do a success story. And the old days, you had to read your success story. You get these huge accolades from everyone. So you, it's, they call it, in people who have studied cults, they call it love bombing. Because you're just, you've never felt so much love in your life. You know, it's like, wow, I am really terrific. I did this communication course, right? And actually, truthfully, the communication course I loved. It's a great, it's a great little tool. And a lot of people who left said that was one of their original successes, was the beginning communication course. But then you go to get out and they go, no, you can't leave. You haven't even gone into the second car. You've got to get clear. You've got to do OT. You know, you've got to do all these other things. So you, they keep moving you along the train. And you keep going car to car, more and more money as you go up. Remember, it's more and more money. And it's more and more now. What is your name? Yeah. Joy. Joy. Okay, we are allowing you, you've been invited to come on to the OT levels. But we have to know that you're ready for the OT levels, <laughs> right? And that's a big thing, Joy. I mean, this is a huge step, it's a huge responsibility. Most of these bozos in here are never gonna make it. But you are. We picked you out, <laughs> you know? We know you can do it, we, you can. My, most people, they won't make it. They don't have the money, they don't have the intention. <laughs> You know, they, they don't even say it. They, they don't have the ability, but you have the ability, Joy. And we, we're, we've picked you. And so we want you to come in. We're going to show you a little video and see if you're really, you might not be. There's a couple other people in the room that might make it, but we think you're it. So we're going to show you a few things to do an interview with you, and then we'll see if you're ready or not. See what I mean? So it's like all these little things that just get you like, okay, I am ready. No, I'm ready. I, yeah, they are bozos. I'm ready. <laughs> but that's how it works. I swear to God. And it just, it's level after level. But what happened with Clear, getting back to that, Clear didn't work. Hubbard said he got the first Clear. They had it down at the Shrine Auditorium. And he, remember, he said, you have perfect memory. You have a great IQ. So the first Clear went up on stage, and he said, what color is my tie? And she couldn't remember it. And that was like, whoa, you know, not too cool. So he had to come up with something else to keep the people jumping through the hoops. So he said, don't worry, there's another level. It's called Operating Satan. 